Now that we've gone over the first three tools on the Artisan Subdivision Toolbar, let's continue with the next set of tools on this toolbar, Extrude Faces, Extrude Edges, Inset Faces, and Loop Tool. Extrude Faces is similar to the native Push-Pull with some significant differences. With Push-Pull, tapping the Control key, or Option on the Mac, toggles on Create New Starting Face mode. So each push or pull creates a new set of faces, including the interior faces between cubes in this example. The presence of interior faces means that the model is not manifold or watertight as a single volume. And for proper artisan topology, the best practice is to keep the model manifold with each edge connected to no more than two faces. So if you're planning to use artisan tools, then instead of push-pull, use artisan extrude faces. Each extrusion creates a new set of faces, and like with push-pull, I can click and drag, or click move click, or start the extrusion and enter a distance. Edges are added between new and existing faces, but no unwanted interior faces are added. There is also much more you can do with extrude faces. I'll draw a circle in the red-blue plane with 12 sides and use extrude faces to pull out a cylinder. As with the cubes example, we've seen how extrude faces can pull out single faces one at a time. This tool can also work on multiple pre-selected faces, and in this example, results will differ depending on the extrude mode. The current mode is group, as indicated in the top left corner, and by the cursor. Modes are toggled with the Alt key, and there is also a free move mode, which we'll cover a bit farther on. In group mode, Extruded faces remain connected within their groups of connected faces, and all faces are extruded along the direction of their group normal. Note that the resulting new pulled faces remain selected after the extrusion is complete. Back in Extrude Faces, I'll tap the Alt key to switch to Normal mode, which also changes the cursor. In this mode, extruded faces also remain connected to neighboring faces within their groups, but the extrude direction for each face is along vertex normals. The last mode is individual, in which faces are extruded individually along their normals, and faces do not remain connected. If I start a new extrusion, but want to end it, I can press the Escape key. I can also use the Escape key to deselect any currently selected faces or edges. This example started with planar quad faces, with all resulting faces also quads. Extrude Faces also works on non-planar quads, like the faces of this subdivided and smoothed box. I'll pre-select the blue faces, and here is how the extruded faces would look in normal mode. As long as the operation isn't complete, which means using click move and not dragging the mouse, I can tap Alt to toggle the mode, and see how individual mode will look, and group mode. Free move is disabled by default so extrusions are constrained by face or group normals as we've seen. Tapping Shift toggles free move on, which enables me to extrude in any direction. I can use the arrow keys to lock an axis direction, or move by eye. Tapping Shift again toggles free move back off. Complex curved surfaces can also be extruded. Here I have vertical faces of a box and cylinder, and I'll add a rectangle and subdivide it. To give the surface some organic curvature, I'll use Artisan Move with a soft radius. Note that even though this resembles a SketchUp sandbox surface, it is comprised of non-planar quads, whereas a sandbox is triangulated. Selecting all faces at once, Extrude Faces in Normal Mode thickens all surfaces. Next we have Extrude Edges, which works similarly to Extrude Faces. With no edges pre-selected, this tool will extrude one edge at a time, with the same results in all three modes. When edges are preselected, extruding edges in group mode produces a second set of edges that stay connected within their groups and are extruded along the direction of the surface. Extruding in normal mode produces edges that also stay connected within their groups, but are extruded along the best fit plane formed by the original loop of edges. And with individual mode, Edges are extruded separately, without staying together. Free Move can be turned on for this tool as well, enabling me to place the new edges anywhere. 
The Inset Faces tool is similar to the native Offset tool, except that offsets are only performed inward. And, like all artisan tools, Inset Faces works on complex surface selections while maintaining quad topology. As with the other tools, Inset Faces can be performed on one face at a time by clicking and dragging or by click, move, click. Each inset quad face is divided into five new quads. When multiple faces are preselected, results depend on the mode, of which there are only two in this tool. With group mode, faces are inset as a group, with each quad along the selection border divided into two or three quads. In individual mode, faces are inset individually. With the inset faces still selected, extruding individual faces makes for an interesting model and even more so when all new faces are selected for subdivide and smooth. Artisan avoids creating non-manifold geometry and poor topology by preventing certain extrude modes or directions. A clear example of this can be seen when trying to use extrude faces on this green face. In either direction, and in any extrude mode, any new faces would overlap with existing faces. The cursor and tooltip indicate when the extrude operation isn't permitted. Artisan Move can be used instead to move this face, or I can eliminate the overlap and then use extrude faces. If you try one of these tools and the operation isn't allowed, try using a different mode, or modify your selection, or move things around. The last tool we'll cover in this video is the Loop tool. By default, this tool is in Add mode as indicated by the cursor. The other mode is Edit, which we'll cover in a bit. As I move along the various edges in this object, this tool shows a preview of a new set of looped edges that intersect the selected edge. If no closed loop is found, the tool will create the longest possible chain of edges. By default, new edges will be placed in weighted average locations between neighboring edge loops. Clicking creates the edges, producing local subdivisions of the affected quad faces. Tapping Shift activates Loop Matching Mode. The neighboring loop that will be matched is highlighted in magenta, and the added edges will stay parallel to the highlighted edges. Tapping Shift again highlights the neighboring loop on the other side, and Tapping Shift a third time turns off Matching Mode. Tapping the Alt key toggles to Edit Loops Mode, in which edge loops can be selected, then moved or deleted. As with adding edge loops, when moving a loop, the position of the vertices is influenced by both neighboring loops, but here as well, I can use the Shift key to keep the edges parallel to either neighboring loop. Remaining in Edit Loops mode, while a loop of edges is selected, pressing the Delete key removes the entire loop, which will join neighboring faces. After adding some loops back in, I can activate Artisan Select and double click to select entire loops, whose vertices can then be modified with other artisan tools. As we've seen, edge locations affect the results of other artisan tools. As an example, here are two identical boxes which I'll subdivide. If I activate the loop tool, switch to edit loops, and move some edges to one side, the results will be different when both boxes are smoothed. Finally, Recall that when working with a group or component, Artisan enables real-time proxy editing when using Artisan tools. Here's a quick example of a grouped box with two subdivide and smooth iterations. I'll use extrude faces to add faces to the proxy model, the loop tool for more edge loops, then Artisan select to select multiple faces, and inset faces to inset the selected faces. And with the new inset faces still selected, extrude faces can pull them all out.